up before you're seated, turn to somebody and greet them. If you haven't already done it, do so and find out who they are. Praise the Lord, they may become your best friend. Hallelujah. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. I'm surprised somebody didn't start just dancing and shouting on that last song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. We keep doing it, they'll do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good to see everybody today. Hallelujah. Brother Dave was telling me earlier that this is a Rosh Hashanah Jewish holiday, Feast of Trumpets. And uh, I didn't know that until he told me just a moment ago. But, uh, you know, the saying is the Lord is going to come back maybe on the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. That would be a good day to do that, wouldn't it? Woo, hallelujah. Good day to do that. Praise the Lord. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, let's pray and we'll get into the Word. Amen. Father, we do thank you and praise you for another opportunity to share your Word with your people. And Lord, we do so, Father, knowing that you lead us and guide us in all truth. Father, you said if we were your disciples, we'd continue in your word, we'd know the truth, and the truth would make us free. Lord, we thank you for that freedom we have, Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray today, Father, that you would make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer to write your words upon this people's heart. Father, that we may be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Father, help us, Lord, to see things we haven't seen hear things we haven't heard, yes, and speak things we've never spoken. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would stir up our hearts by putting us in remembrance of things, Lord, that you never want us to forget. And so, Father, I pray today, Father, that you would use me, Father, as a vessel, Lord, to pour out your word, Father, to pour out your spirit, Father, upon this people. And, Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you thanksgiving, Father. Uh, for all the things that have been done and the things that are about to be done. Lord, we thank you for it. We believe that it's done in Jesus' name. And all that agrees with that says, Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, this is, uh, you know, Communion Sunday. We try to receive communion every fifth Sunday because we want it to be a time that, uh, you know, he said, as often as you do this. Amen. So that means that we need to do it more than one. And some people take that to extreme and think that you're supposed to do that every week. But I think you ought to do it, in enough, do it enough times for you don't forget these things. And I, I'm amazed at the children of Israel, how soon they forgot things. Uh, and that's why the Lord would have them to raise up memorials. You know, when they come across the, the Red Sea, Moses told them to take, you know, 12 stones and, and build an altar, altar there. Amen. So uh, as a memorial, praise the Lord. God put a rainbow in the sky, not for the homosexuals to claim as a symbol of their, their, their being, but to, for the Lord saying that I'll never, rest, uh, never destroy the earth again with a flood. So those are memorials that will keep us in remembrance. Amen. That will put us in remembrance of things. And the communion table puts us in remembrance of things. It puts us in remembrance of the, of the Lord's uh, uh, birth, his sacrifice, his uh, burial, his resurrection puts us in charge of all those things. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and beginning with verse 23, the Bible says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as you do it, as, as oft as you, uh, this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily 
eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now I, I want us to look specifically uh, at verse 26 this morning. The Word of God says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till He comes. You do show the Lord's death till He comes. So this, the, God, the communion table, is the sum of all the gospel. Amen. I, every, everything that you could learn about the gospel is here on this table this morning. Amen. And He says, do this as often as you do this. Uh, he says, you're doing it, you're showing the Lord's death till He comes. Well, that lets me know a couple of things there, that Jesus did die, amen, but it, but it lets me know that he didn't stay in the grave, that he's coming back, praise God. And so we know that he's coming back, as sure as I, I know that he died for me, I know that, that he's coming back. But, but look at this, I want to look specifically at the Lord's death. He says, as often as you do this, uh, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. What does it show about the Lord's death? You think it, it ought to show about the Lord's life instead of the Lord's death, but but look at this: Jesus died for each and every one of us. Praise the Lord! If there was only one person that needed Jesus, I believe that He would have died for that one person. And so uh, Jesus died where we wouldn't have to die. Don't shout me down just because I'm preaching good, but uh, but He died where we wouldn't where we wouldn't have to die. It's actually, death, death in the Bible means, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's more than cessation of life, but it means a separation. Death is a separation that takes place. Death is separation from God. And Jesus experienced that death through the cross. He was separated from God. You know, you're, you're here today, and, you know, someday people will say that you've died. But really, you haven't died in the, in the sense of the word. Because your body is no longer, or your spirit man is no longer there. Your spirit man is separated from your body. Amen. And because of that, your body will die. And so Jesus was separated from the Father. And that, that's the only way Jesus could have died. Because he had the blood of the blood of the Lamb. He had sinless blood flowing through his veins. And the only way he could die was to lay down his, uh, lay down his life. Amen. And for his spirit man to be separated uh, from the physical man. And so when the, when the spirit of Jesus uh, left his body, that was dead, but he was separated from God. Jesus had never known what it, would be, what it was like to be separated from God. And so when his body and his spirit was separated from God, you know, Jesus died. And as a result of that death, he went to hell three days and three nights. And Jesus, Jesus was in hell three days and three nights. So Jesus bore our sin. Go with me to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, and this is a, a prophecy that Isaiah made hundreds of years before it came to pass. And the Bible says in Isaiah 53, and look at uh, verse 4 and verse 5. You probably got that all marked up, and you've probably got that memorized, but let's look at it. In Isaiah 53 and verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. For he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Praise the living God. This word griefs is the Hebrew word cloi, C-H-O-L-I, and it means sickness or disease. The word sorrows is the Hebrew word makob, means pains or pains of punishment. So Jesus bore our sickness, carried our disease, and by his stripes we were healed. He became sin. Jesus became sin where we wouldn't have to. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, says that he who knew no sin was made sin for us, amen, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus was made sin. He never committed sin. He carried our sin to the cross. Amen. Our sins were with him on the cross. And that's the only way that Jesus could have died was for him to become sin. Amen. For our sins to be attached to him. And that's the only way he could have died, a physical death. 
So, uh, so we do show the Lord's death till he comes. And as we look at the Lord's death, what he accomplished on the cross for us, praise the Lord. It's, it's amazing, it's tremendous what he, he prepared for us. So he became sin. Our sin was attached to him. Uh, and, and as a result of that, he was separated from Father God. And he went to hell three days and three nights. And in Acts chapter 2, it says that the Lord wouldn't allow him to stay there. And, and so he went to hell three days and three nights. And, you know, there's big arguments over this, been to, over this doctrine, you know, ever since the, uh, the church began, I, I guess, about did Jesus really die and go to hell? Well, the answer to that is yes. Because if he didn't go to hell, you're going to have to. Amen. If he didn't go to hell, you're going to have to. But he bore, he bore our sin, and as a result of that, the punishment of our sin, our griefs. Our, he carried our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He carried our sickness. That's all a result of sin. All of that was nailed to the cross. All of that was nailed to the cross. So Jesus bore our sickness, carried our disease, and by his stripes we were healed. So all, everything that Jesus accomplished, uh, the majority of things was there on the cross. A lot of times we look at his life, throughout his life, but it was on the cross that he won his biggest battles. Amen. It, it was the cross where Jesus defeated Satan, basically. And so he went to hell three days and three nights. And as a result of his death in hell, he was raised, you know, uh, uh, he carried the pain of our, our punishment because we won't have to. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But up from the grave, he arose, triumphant over all his foes. On the third day, he was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. So Jesus bore our sickness on the cross. Amen. By his stripes, we were healed. And if you were healed, you are healed. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2 and, and look, or 1 Peter chapter 2 rather. 1 Peter chapter 2 and look at verse uh, 22. Who did, talking about Jesus here, it says, Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth rightly. Praise the Lord. So we see, and well, let me go ahead and read verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Praise the living God. So healing is part of our covenant rights. Amen. Because of Jesus suffering for us, carrying our sins, he became sin who, did, who knew no sin, and, you know, and that's why people will argue and say, well, Jesus couldn't go to hell because he never sinned. But he became sin. Our sin was nailed to him. Our sin was attached to him. And that's how he could go to hell. He went to hell where you wouldn't have to. Praise the Lord. So, so he became sin that we, wouldn't have, that, uh, that we wouldn't have to go to hell. Praise the living God. And so uh, and he carried our pains. Isaiah 53 he said, carried our pains and our sorrows. And so pain is not the will of God. Amen. And so we need to fight that when sickness and disease come. See, that's why every Christian should memorize Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5 there. Amen. And 1 Peter 2, 24. We ought to know that by heart. Amen. And that's, we use the, these scriptures to fight the devil. Amen. There's no need for me to carry it. So surely he hath borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. And by his stripes I was healed. Praise the living God. And quoting those scriptures over and over and over and over and over and over again. I remember, you know, for those that don't know it, I had a heart operation this summer. And, uh, you know, and, you know I, I, they'd tell me about putting people under that anesthesia. And they'd have all kind of uh, hallucinations and dreams, visions and things like that. You know, and say things, you know. They'd cuss and they'd say ungodly things, you know, under that. Well, I said, it ain't going to happen to me. Amen. And so, so when they put me under that anesthesia, before they do, did that, uh, you know, I, I was praying, uh, praying in tongues part of the way. Amen. And quoting scripture. Every scripture I could think of concerning healing. As I went to sleep, I was quoting scripture. When I woke up four hours later, 
Amen. I was still quoting scripture. Amen. <laughs> Praise the living God. I was quoting the word of God. Praise God. So, so why? Because I believe this. I believe this. I believe that this is for me. I believe that it is for you. And I believe God wants you healthy all the days of your life. I believe that. You don't have to listen. I say this every, almost every Tuesday at healing school. You don't have to be sick to die. So if you want to die, die. But bless God, die in a healthy body. But you know what? I found that most people, when they got a healthy body, don't want to die. Amen. Until they learn more about Jesus and more about heaven. Praise the Lord. So you don't have to be sick to die. Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't have to be sick to die. Well, that's, see, you, 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 that's why you ought to fight sickness. You ought to fight sickness with everything that's on the inside of you. Amen. Toe ache, ear ache, heartache, whatever, headache, whatever, it might, whatever ache you might have. Amen. You need to fight it. No, I'm not carrying the pain of that because Jesus already carried it for me. Amen. If Jesus carried my pain. There's no need for me to carry it because he carried it for me. Amen. He bore my sickness. There's no need for me to be sick because Jesus bore my sickness. Hallelujah. And we ought to stand firm in the face of the devil. Oh, but Brother John, what about Brother so-and-so? Or what about Sister Doodad? Or, or this one or that? And what about them, Pastor? They were good Christians and they suffered a lot. Honey, they might not know what you know. Amen. Usually that's the case because the Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. What you don't know will hurt you. Amen. It will hurt you. We've heard all our life. Well, what you don't know ain't going to hurt you. It won't hurt you. That, that's the farthest thing from the truth. What you don't know will kill you. What you don't know will cause you to live a, a, a terrible life. Amen. But Jesus came. We might have life and have it more abundantly than just the, the revelation of that verse. Amen. Or to set you free from sickness and disease, poverty and lack, heartache and trials, sadness, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Amen. It ought, to, it ought to set you free from these things. Amen. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants you to have the abundant life. Hallelujah. And with that in mind, Jesus also... You know, when he was separated from God, that's what death is. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. We're fixing to receive communion, and we do show the Lord's death till he comes. But did you know the Bible says in, uh, where is it, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, it says Jesus was made poor that we might be made, uh, that, that we might be made rich. Jesus was made poor that, uh, it says, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. Woo, hallelujah. So the communion table tells us of that as well. Amen. So, so that was nailed to the tree as well. Amen. Everything that the body experiences, amen, it was the, the, the ill effects, amen, all those things were nailed to the tree, nailed to the cross. So Jesus, uh, you know, took our poverty and gave us his wealth. Hallelujah. Praise God. That means I don't have to be poor no more. Amen. You don't have to be poor anymore. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus bore your poverty. Praise the Lord. And so when he became separated from God, see, people that are separated from God, they are poor. Or they might have, you know, like I tell you this all the time, what good is it if you got a lot of money and you can't enjoy it? If you got a lot of money, you may have a lot of money, but you can't eat a a uh, cheeseburger from McDonald's. Amen. What, what good? What, what good is that money going to do you? Amen. I want the cake and eat it all. Amen, don't you? Praise, praise the Lord. I, I want it all. I, I want all the blessings of God. Praise the Lord. So he says, uh, you know, that, that the, the Bible says that Jesus became poor, that we might be rich. But I believe that's talking about rich in every facet of life. Not only rich spiritually, amen, but rich physically, amen, rich uh, mentally, amen, rich in every area of our life. I, mean, I believe that's the will of God. And, and people get upset with me because, you know, there are so many Christians that are, are destitute in life. So many Christians are struggling needlessly. You know, and I'm not getting on to anybody in here. Amen, if you're struggling financially, I've been there, done it. I got the T-shirt, amen, amen. So, so I've been there. I know what it is to have lack. 
I know what it is to do without. But I also know what it is to do to, to live abundantly. Amen? And have more than enough. And listen to me. Just like I've heard so many people say in the past, some of my mentors, I've been poor and now I'm rich and rich is better. <laughs> Amen? Does that mean, Brother John, you got a million dollars? No, not hardly yet, but praise God I'm working on it. <laughs> Amen? So, so uh, you know, God wants us wealthy in every facet of life. Amen? Every facet of life. So poverty, Jesus bore as much of our uh, poverty as he did our sin and our sickness because sin is a result of poverty. There wasn't any poverty until sin was committed. Isn't that right? There wasn't any sickness until sin was committed. So sickness and poverty, amen, they, they are, are a result of sickness. I mean, a result of sin. They're a result of our sin. Because of sin, the world knows all about sickness. The world knows all about poverty because of sin. But if there was no sin, there would be no sickness and there would be no poverty. Isn't that right? So Jesus nailed that to the tree. He carried that to the cross for us. Now, when did he become sick? Was Jesus sick? Was, was he ever sick for 33 and a half years of his life? No, no, the, he, he wasn't sick. You can't find anywhere in the Bible says that he was sick. Amen. He was not sick. So where, when was he sick? On the cross. Amen. On the cross he experienced every symptom, every disease. Amen. He suffered more than humanity can ever realize. Amen. It, because all of our sickness and disease was placed upon him. Amen. Because all that sickness and disease was placed on him. You know, uh, see, that was a result of sin. 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 Uh, cause to, uh, that uh, causes sickness and disease. Same way with poverty. Same way with lack. Amen. Jesus, when was Jesus made poor? On the cross. Jesus wasn't poor when he walked this earth. Oh, yes, brother. Well, let me ask you this question. You remember at Christmas time, we, we celebrate Christmas. And we celebrate the wise men coming to worship Jesus. And they come from afar. Amen. Not a fire, but afar. That they can't, they can't, they can't become of afar, amen. That means they're on this journey a good ways, and uh, it took them a while to get there. And when they get there, now listen to me. When they get there, we see, you know, and we see this in mangers at Christmas time, you know, uh, you know where they 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 come and they got one camel standing there, amen. And they they take off this little pot of gold and a frankincense and myrrh, just enough to hold in their hand. Amen. That's another false narrative that people have, have propagated about the Word of God. No, these were caravans. Are you listening to me? Caravans coming from the east. Amen. These were kings. These were notable people, wealthy people, and they came from a far distance. Amen. And they presented to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Caravans. 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 So... So Jesus, you know, it would not not this. Well, let me. I'm getting ahead of myself. Doesn't the Bible say that he that provideth not for his own is worse than an infidel and denied the faith? All right, who's Jesus? The Son of God. Amen. That means if God doesn't take care of Jesus, that God is worse than an infidel and denied the faith. So it was God's responsibility to take care of Jesus. So, uh, so we see. Praise God. God moves on the hearts of these rich people. Amen. To come and leave with Jesus enough gold, frankincense, and myrrh to do him the rest of his life. Amen. And he doesn't expect, the Bible says that labor is worthy of his hire. Amen. So he tells Joseph, who is the stepfather of Jesus. Amen. Now here's enough gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. To raise my child. Take care of him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, so Jesus could not have been poor you know, on this earth. Besides that, you know, Jesus was a tither. How do you know that, Brother John, that Jesus was a tither? Because the Bible says he kept all the law. If anybody ever tithed, it was Jesus. If anybody ever, ever operated in the laws of prosperity, it was Jesus. The Bible says, Give and it's given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be and pour into your lap. If it, that happened to anybody, it happened to Jesus. I found out, you know, in you know, in 36 uh, years of ministry or, or more, 
uh, almost 40 years of ministry. Uh, actually, I have been in ministry for 40, 40, over 40 years. And uh, I found out in 40 years of ministry, when you help somebody, amen, they're so appreciative, they try to give you money. Amen, because you've helped them, because you've blessed them. And so, no, I don't want your money. I didn't do that for money. I did that because I love God and I love you. Amen. And so, but people are appreciative of that. Well, look at all the people that Jesus ministered to. Amen. All the people that were healed. All the people that partook of the fish and the loaves. Amen. There's some people appreciative of that. Amen. Just to, I've experienced that on a, a little level. But Jesus experienced that on a great level. So I'm sure there was people giving into his ministry. Amen. Giving, giving into his ministry. Look at, uh, I, Lord, help me find this. I didn't know I was going to do that. But Luke chapter 11, I think that it is. Luke chapter 11. Hallelujah. No, that's not it. Let me, let me look one other place. But anyway, there was, there was, uh, yeah. Let, let me read this. Acts, I'm um, at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the, the wife of Cusa, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Amen. Amen. So, so we got people there, those women... That, that minister to, to Jesus of their substance. What about, that they, they financed his ministry on the earth. Praise the Lord. So can you see that? Well, see, I've experienced that as well. Amen. You get somebody's needs met, they, they're appreciative of it. Pastor, I want to do things for you. Y'all yeah, yeah, remember when I had that, we had that 25-year celebration of, of y'all, you know, uh, of the ministry, of me being in the ministry? Y'all gave me a tremendous offering. Hey, man, I think y'all gave me like $37,000. Hey, man, you know, just in a, uh, just in a, a, a bless, we want to bless you, Pastor. You know, I still got a picture of that in my garage. When you walk, pull in my garage, there's a copy of that check right up there on that garage. <laughs> hey, man, but you know what I do? I pray over you people. Hey, man, but see, people are appreciative. And if they, if they did that to me, if they did that to me, you know they did it to Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus, all the multitudes that he healed. You know there were some of those people that he healed had money. You know that, you know that they were. These people had, had money. They ministered to Jesus of their money. Praise God. So Jesus could not have been poor. Amen. He was a tither. We know that he was a tither. So we know that the promise of the tithe, God opens the windows of heaven and pull you up. Bless you. You don't have room enough to receive. We know that. He was a giver. He gave and it was given unto him good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. He kept all the law. And if he kept all the law, he kept the benefits of the law. The benefits of the law were poured out upon him. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. He says, if you'll serve me, I'll bless you. Amen. Amen. Jesus was blessed. Amen. The blessing of the Lord stayed upon Jesus all the time. We're not talking about a blessing. We're talking about the blessing. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. You know what the Bible says? The blessing of the Lord. It, well, Jesus had the blessing on him. How many believe Jesus was blessed? Amen. Well, there you go. Amen. The blessing of the Lord was upon him. Amen. And as a result of that, the wealth came. Hallelujah. So, but when Jesus went to the cross, he became sick. He, he bore our sickness carried our diseases, he, he, he felt the pain. All the pain that we've ever, ever felt was on that tree. Amen. He felt the pain. He endured the pain, but he became poor. He, he, he understood what it was to be poor. He was stripped naked, nailed on the tree. Praise God. He realized what poverty really meant. Amen. On that tree. And he said, I'll gladly take it. I'll, be, I, I, I'll, I'll become poverty. I, you, I'll take the poverty 
Just bless my children. See, every, every parent in this room, under the sound of my voice, would suffer anything, I believe we would, amen, would suffer anything that we needed to suffer in order for our children to be blessed. Amen, I know I would. Amen, I believe you would too. Amen, because we want our children blessed. You know, that, that reminds me of the scripture over there in Galatians chapter 6, I think that it is. It says, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all men, but especially to those that are of the household of faith. Amen, that's my kids. Amen, let's do good to all men, but especially those of your own family. Amen, you, you need to bless them just once in a while just because they're your family. Well, why are you giving me this, Dad? Just because I love you. Amen, just because I want to bless you. Amen, that's, that's all. That's all. Praise God. And so, uh, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. He addeth no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. Uh, death, death the, Jesus, the death that Jesus experienced, was separation from God. He had never been separated from Father God ever. And on the cross, he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? One other thing that I've noticed reading the Bible, that's the only time Jesus ever referred to Father God as God. He always referred to him as Father until this point. And that's the first time those words ever come out of his mouth, was, My God, my God. Why has thou forsaken me? Amen. And, uh, and so that he, Jesus was experiencing death. And se God separated himself. God had to turn his back on Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God he did. Amen. So, so we got to rightly discern the Lord's body. Isn't that right? We have to rightly discern the Lord's body. And the Bible says if we don't discern the Lord's body, then uh, we're unworthy of partaking of this communion table. And so in order for me to partake of this body, in order for me to take this communion in a worthy manner, amen, is I got to understand what I just told you. Amen, that Jesus bore your sickness, He carried your disease, He was made poor, that you might be made rich. You have to realize all those things. Jesus suffered for you. Jesus went to hell where you won't have to go to hell. Jesus was made sin where you wouldn't have to sin. You could overcome that sin. And whether you, whether you agree with me or not, you can. Amen. You can do it. Praise the Lord. And then, then the Bible says, if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous one. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad Jesus made it easy for us? Aren't you glad that it, it became easy for us? Lord, I messed up. Amen. You don't, you don't have to suffer uh, because of your sin. You don't have to drag it around three or four days begging God to forgive you. And people who do that, they'll mess up, they'll sin, and, you know, and, and they'll, they'll almost go into a great depression because they sin. Before I was saved, I worked for a rehabilitation, you know, a state-operated, state-funded rehabilitation facility. And we would, uh, you know, train handicapped people, try to get them back into the workforce, and, uh, and minister to them. Well, I was just an administrator of the, of, of the facility. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't one of the professional gurus, but I, I was their boss. <laughs> Amen. So, but anyway, so every once in a while, we'd have a meeting in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, down at Bryce's Hospital. And if anybody knows anything about Bryce's Hospital, that's a mental institute, I guess one of the largest in the state, or the largest, maybe one of the, the only ones. But anyway... I remember being, you know, in, in a meeting down there at Bryce's Hospital. And, and I remember, uh, you know, they were discussing these caseloads, different people discussing things. And they said, one of them said, well, we have a guy that, you know, he just walks up and down the hall all, all day long. Walks up and down the halls of the hospital all day long and begging and begging and pleading to God 
that God would forgive him of his sins. Uh, and he says that we, we've tried to minister to him, but he'd, he'd say he's committed the unpardonable sin. It just, I mean, just, it drove him crazy. Drove him crazy. And, uh, and see, and that's the way that some people are. They can't forgive themselves. Amen. For you to think that you have to suffer for your sins, you're partaking of the communion table in an unworthy manner because you don't have to suffer for your sins. Jesus already did. And all I have to do is say, Lord, I missed it. Amen. I've, I've missed it. Forgive me of my sin. And you're forgiven. Well, well Brother John, what if, I, what if there's some I forget? It don't matter. He's already taken care of it. Amen. Your, your sins in the past have been taken care of. Your sins in the future have been taken care of. Amen. So don't, don't worry about it, saints of God. Amen. But, but when you do sin, you're automatically, God auto, automatically lets you know that. You know, that's why I have a problem with Christians living in the old lifestyle. You know, you know, live like the devil and say, you know, I'm okay. No, when you get saved, the Bible talks about the grace of God leads men to repentance. It's the grace of God. It shows, shows us, you know, where we've messed up. And people got the great message of grace all mixed up. But when I got saved, I was saved. Nobody had to tell me I was saved. I knew I was saved. Amen. Amen. I went home and started reading my Bible. I pulled out my Jack Daniel. Amen. I pulled out the marijuana. Amen. Brother John, I can't believe you're telling me all this. Amen. I was a sinner just like you are. Amen. I got rid of every ungodly thing in my house. Nobody had to tell me to do that. I knew to do that. And so, so nobody had to tell me to quit cussing. I mean, God cleaned up my mouth immediately. Amen. A lot of you military people that's been in the military, you know, you know, it seemed like nobody do anything until you cussed them. Amen. But, but I, you know, all, all of that went away. All of that, I, nobody had to tell me that. Nobody had to tell me to go to church. I wanted to go to church. Nobody had to tell me to read your Bible every day. Nobody had to tell me that. Amen. So I have a problem with these people that walk the aisle week after week after week. Amen. And raise their hand for salvation and nothing changes in their life. Amen. Honey, I'm not God and you better thank God I'm not. <laughs> but I believe that people like that are never saved. People like that, they didn't get saved. Because if you get saved, that want to to sin, it's out there. I'm not saying you don't sin, but the want to goes out the door. Amen. The want to leaves. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so, and if you still, you know, nothing changes, you didn't have the same experience that I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, man, I, I fell in love with Jesus immediately. And I wanted to please Him, and I wanted to, I wanted to do everything that I could to represent Him on this earth. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I remember the day the Lord called, He was dealing with me about preaching. And I was rejected, I can't, you know, I just can't, I just thought I couldn't do that. Because I'd seen too many preachers backslide. Yeah. I'd seen too many pre preachers live for God for a while and then go back out into the world. Yeah. And I said, I ain't going to be one of them. I ain't going to be one of them. And the Lord spoke to me and said, well, so you plan on backsliding? <laughs> I said, no, Lord, I don't. He said, well, what's holding you back? I said, nothing. Amen. So I surrendered myself to preach. Surrender myself to Him. Amen. Because I knew I would never backslide. I would never turn my back on Him and walk away. And that was in 1977. Amen. And so what's that? 42 years ago. 42 years ago, I was born again. Old things passed away. All things became new. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And if I, have, if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Hallelujah. If I confess my sin, He's faithful and just to forgive me. So if you ask God to forgive you, well, let's go, go back to that guy in Tuscaloosa in the insane asylum. <laughs> Amen. See, he thought God couldn't forgive him of his sin. Yeah. Amen. But God can. God can and he will. Amen. There's not a sin that you've committed that God won't forgive you of. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it won't keep you out of heaven. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, so when we partake of this, 
if you've sinned and you know you sinned, Lord, I repent. Yes. Just bow your head right now. Examine your heart. If you've sinned, forgive, ask God to forgive you. That don't, that don't mean you're going to go and turn around and do the same thing tomorrow. No, with God's help and God's ability, you'll never commit that sin ever again. Thank you, Father, for delivering us from the power of sin. Hallelujah. All right. And that, that's done. It's a done deal. So sin is not going to disturb you or hinder you from receiving communion because you're forgiven. You're a child of God. Oh, hallelujah. So we confess our sin, God forgives us. You, you know, we have people in this church. Every, every service I have, I ask people, I give an invitation for salvation. And lo and behold, every, every Sunday or every time I give an invitation, people raise their hand. But you know what? It's the same hand almost every week. I used to count them and say, we had, we had four people saved Sunday. Next Sunday, hey, we had four people saved Sunday. Guess what? It's the same four. Right. Amen. And some of these numbers you hear, just like I've gone to some of these big revivals that God's saving people right and left. Well, I'll take the Brownsville revival, for instance. Amen. And I might disturb you by saying this. But uh, I heard about this revival in Pensacola, Florida, taking place. People getting saved right and left. I said, well, I've got to see this. I mean, this went on for like a year or more. And so I'm going to go down there. I'm, I go, so I go down there. Boy, there's a, they said, you better get there early. You want in the building. So I got there, I thought an hour early would be sufficient enough. Amen, get there, and there's already a line outside the door from here to the highway out there. And I thought, oh, praise the Lord. I better get in line. So I got in line and got up almost to me, maybe about as far as me to the door, and they shut the door. said, nobody else can get in. The building's full. Go to this overflow place next door and watch on the video. I said, I didn't drive all this way to sit in and watch a video. I want to be in the action. So being the persistent person that I am, hey amen, I went to one of the ushers. And I said, listen, I'm a pastor, and I've driven all these miles to get here, to get in this service. I am positive that you can find one more seat. One more seat. There's one more place that in there for me. He said, pastor, you stand right here, and I'll go look. And he went and he's gone 10 or 15 minutes. I'm still standing there. He comes back and said, come on, Pastor. Hey, Amen, I found your place. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm in that service. I'm in that service, and sure enough, I've been from the first twang of the guitar, the praise and worship went on 20, I'm at two hours or more. And nobody left. Nobody got up to go to the bathroom. That's a miracle in itself. <laughs> no, 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 nobody had to get a drink of water. And, and, you know, in that revival. And so, I just, this is amazing. They had a halftime break. Let everybody go to the bathroom. Everybody get a drink of water. Come on back, and 20 minutes later, we're going to start back. So I went back, and, you know, and the preacher preached. And one of those sermons like, if you kick the dog this morning, you're going to hell. If you spit on the cat, I know you're going to hell. And see, that might disturb somebody. Say, Me, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just telling what I saw that day. Now I'm judging that whole revival by what I see that day. So they give an image, and they had a big sign out, you know, like 1,329 people saved in, in this revival. And, uh, and so, uh, so in the end of the service, they give, they give an invitation for salvation. And, and boy, the, the altars are filled up. I mean, people weeping and crying, but they got, I love you, Jesus, on the back of their T-shirt. They're big, carrying a big Schofield Bible. Amen. And I think, how many times has this guy been saved? See, I got saved one time. That's why I remember the date. I don't remember the dates that I got saved. I remember the day I got saved. October the 23rd, 1977. Why do I remember that? Because it was such a drastic change in my life. I, I, you know, and I'm not saying you have to remember the day that you got saved, but I, I believe you got. You might know, you might not be able to say like I said, October the 23rd. But you know, a certain day in your life, you gave your life to the Lord. Maybe at 12 years old, 14 years old. Amen. You might know that, but you might not know the day that it was. 
but you know that you were saved that time. Right. Amen. So, so, but these people that raise their hand week after week after week, week after week after week, amen, they don't understand redemption. They don't understand you, 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 you're partaking of, the, of this table in an unworthy manner. Amen, and we don't want you to do that. Are you, are you listening to me? This morning, God, amen, you know, is able to take care of you. Amen. You get saved, He'll clean you up, pick you up, dust you off. And I'm not saying we've all walked just right all our life because we've all missed it. Hadn't we? We've all missed it. You know, think, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I thought those thoughts. I can't, I can't believe these things. We've all done that. Amen. But I know I'm saved. I know I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know that. And there ain't nobody can teach me otherwise. Nobody can stop me from believing that. Because I know I had an encounter with God. And besides that, the Bible says I did. Amen. So I'm saved. So anyway, so they would add all those people to that, that figure on the wall. 1,000, whatever I said. You know. Amen. And that's more people. All these people got saved. And look, look at all the crusades that's been happening in Africa and uh, these out North America, South America, Central America. I remember we were in Honduras one time. I preached uh, in Honduras I, uh, we, we, on an open field. I was on a stage, and all, everybody else was in an open field. Run, we ran some lights out there. Everybody stood up in the rain to hear me preach. I mean, there was thousands of people there. But I guarantee you, go back today to that city in Honduras. I, I tell you what it was, but I can't pronounce it. Amen. Go back to that city in Honduras. A lot of those same people would be right there raising their hand for salvation. We see this all the time. A multitude. Remember T.L. Osborne? Look at some of his crusades. You could, as far as you could see would be people standing. Amen. And nearly the majority of them got saved. Well, do they have to get saved again and again and again and again and again? No. No. Jesus paid the price once and for all. Amen. Turn your name aside. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Amen. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved today. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Examine your heart. Are you saved? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Is Jesus Christ your Lord? Or have you been playing religious games? If you'd say, Pastor, that's me. I'm lost. I'm backslidden. I'm out of the will of God. Please pray for me, Pastor. I don't know if I'm saved or not. But I ask you to pray for me this morning. If that's you, if, excuse me, if that's you, Raise your hand right where you are. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm not going to embarrass you. Anybody in the house that would say, Pastor, that's me. I'm lost. I'm backslidden. I'm out of the will of God. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven if I died. Anybody here this morning? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There's not a single hand in the house. That's probably one of the first times. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. So I take it that you're all born again. So we're going to receive communion. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come. And I'm going to ask the ushers to distribute the uh, communion elements. And as they do, I want you to hold them till we all partake. You hold, hold the communion elements till we all, and we'll all receive together. Amen. The Bible says wait on one another. So we're going to wait on each other. Praise the Lord. So good to see you here today. Amen. And, and as you partake of the communion elements, amen, whatever you need from God, just release your faith. If, you, if you're sick in your body, I believe there's healing power in, the, in this table. I believe there's healing power in the communion elements. As we take this, our faith, amen, draws the healing power out of it. It's not some magical, mystical thing, but it's a representation of the body and of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Please, if you've got a child with you, you help them. Don't want to get 
juice all over you and your clothing or the carpet and the chairs. Hallelujah. And we're all going to partake together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And every time we receive communion, I like to teach on it. You know, I don't want to add it to the service and say, by the way, let's, let's have communion before we leave. No, we need to teach on it from time to time in order for you to know why we're doing it. Amen. And, uh, and if you don't know that, amen, it could hurt you. So it says that, that if we partake in an unworthily manner, it says some are weak and some are sick and some even die. Praise the Lord. Some even die because they don't partake in an unworthy manner. In an unworthily manner. It said, uh, well, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So we, we're, we're discerning, well, that's what I preached on this morning, to get you to understand the Lord's body. Amen. We do show the Lord's death till he comes. It's all wrapped up in the death of Jesus. He died for you to be alive. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen? So uh, we do show the Lord's death till He comes. We, if we don't rightly discern that, then we're partaking of the communion table in an unworthily, in an unworthy manner. In an unworthy manner if we don't partake of it. By understanding what happened. His blood... His body was broken. Amen. We understand that now, don't we? I've been preaching it to you for 40 years. Amen. So surely we do. Surely we do. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see so many people. We used to have a lady in our church that she was so afraid she wasn't going to make it to heaven. She was so fearful all the time. The last time I saw her, she was in the hospital. And I, I went to visit her in the hospital. And she would say, oh, Brother John, I pray that I make it. I pray that I make it. I try to convince her. Yeah, sweetheart, you're going to make it. Hey, Amen. Do you, be, you believe in the Lord Jesus? Yeah, I believe in the Lord Jesus. Is there any sin in your life? Not, none that I know of. But I, Lord, forgive me if there's any sin in my life. You know, she was saying stuff like that. And she was so afraid that, that she was going to die and go to hell. And I, I spent, I couldn't tell you the hours I spent with that woman, you know, trying to convince her that she was saved. Amen. Just like that guy in Tuscaloosa, Bryce's Hospital. It drove him crazy because he thought he couldn't get forgiveness. No, God will forgive you. God will forgive you. Praise God, he's bigger than we are. But, Brother John, I've committed this sin a hundred times. Well, Jesus says... If you've committed that sin seven times, 70. Amen. That's 490 times for one sin in one day. Have you ever committed 490 sins in one day? That same sin 490 times in one day? No. Amen. And so if you haven't done that, God will forgive you. If you've, I, I've, I've missed it a hundred times. Then a hundred times repent. That's simple. Praise God. All right. Everybody got communion elements? I got none. All right, praise the Lord. The Bible said, Paul speaking here, and he says, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, uh, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So take the bread and we're going to break it. And then we'll eat it. Go ahead and break the bread. And then we'll eat it. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he was made poor. He was made sick. He went to hell where we wouldn't have to suffer all these things. Lord, we believe that healing power flows through this congregation this morning. And people are healed, filled, Lord, people are touched by the power of the living God. Sickness has to leave. 
healing has to come. So, Father, we thank you for it. Believe that it's done. The Bible says the uh, same manner he took the cup. When he, same manner he took this cup, praying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over the, this cup, Father, the, the representation of the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that he shed his blood for us, that he was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for the cleansing blood of the Lamb, knowing that this blood, Father, cleanses every sin, every symptom in our body. Lord, we thank and we praise you for all that Jesus accomplished. Now we, we drink this cup in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ushers are going to, uh, you're going to pass the buckets, or they're on the pedestals back there. On the way out, just drop those, dispose of those uh, cups in that, that can back there. We don't want it to get on the furniture or you. Or if you don't carry them home, that's fine. Just don't get it on your clothing or any of the furniture. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. Well, see, I'm not going to pray for your healing this morning because I believe if you're sick, you're already healed. Amen. Amen. You can receive healing with that. I read John uh, Wesley's biography, and he received communion every, every, every day. Amen. And he lived to be 88 years old. 88 years old. And, uh, and he received communion every day. Hallelujah. And he had rode horseback and buggies. Amen. And if he can do that, see, see he knew the power in that, t in that table. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. All right, everybody bless. I'm, gonna ask my, I'm not even going to ask my prayer team to come this morning because I believe all your needs are met. Yeah. Amen. So let's all stand at our feet. Turn your neighbor to love on them a little bit. You can be dismissed. God bless you. We love you. Go rejoice and we'll see you. Tuesday morning healing school. Praise the Lord. Wednesday night church. Come back and be with us.